Good afternoon, my beloved students. This is teacher Mustafa, and welcome back to the second part of reading Far From Shoah. As we have finished in the last part, page 222, and we had some details about the scientists, and we knew that there were 15 of them, one chief scientist, six marine mammal observers, two birders, um, one of them is our main character, Sophie, two oceanographers, and four visiting scientists. They'll all be working together on the same boat, okay? So as you can see here, this is the boat from the, from, you know, from the side view, but it's the uh, first half, not the last half. As you can see here, we can see an anemometer, which detects wind speed and direction. We can see a flying bridge, and we can see the bridge. So we have two bridges, a flying bridge and a bridge. We can see life rafts if this ship sinks. We have something called mast. We have the captain's cabin. We have the anchor, the bow, and the jack staff. Okay, so let's go on and read paragraph seven. And before, but before we read, I need you <clears throat> to answer this question after we read, okay? Here, highlight details that help you understand why is this research trip is important. Highlight details that help you understand why this research trip is important. It's here, the answer is here in paragraph seven. I'll read it, then uh, you will extract the answer. Although over the next months, we'll collect data on many aspects of the marine ecosystem, the primary focus of the trip is to find out what is happening to the populations of spotted and spinner dolphins. So, what do you think the goal or the aim of this um, of this trip is, of this research trip is? You have one minute because paragraph seven is very small. Adam, yes. uh, what is the answer now? What, why is this to research find, trip is important? To find out what is happening to the population of spotted and spinner dolphins. Very good. The focus or the goal is to find out what's happening to the dolphins, right? Right. So Very do they easy. care about the dolphins, Adam? What? Do they care about the dolphins? Yeah. Who are they? The scientists. Scientists, very good. So not people in the street, right? Yeah. Not teachers, yeah. just scientists. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in the text, of course, scientists, and in, in real world also, scientists care about almost everything. Okay, now let's read paragraph eight. And when we get to the part where the answer is, I will ask you a question. Okay, why do we want to know about spotted and spinner dolphin numbers? There are several threats to these animals. The primary one used to be the yellow fin tuna fishery. In the ETP, Tuna and dolphins are often found in large schools together. Tuna frequently are caught by a method called purseining. A net 
is dragged to surround the tuna school, then drawn closed. If there are dolphins with the tuna, they are caught as well. So here I have a question and the answer is starting here, okay? The question is, highlight details that help you understand how ocean scientists work can make a difference in the world. Can make a difference in the world. Remember when I asked Adam, do scientists, who cares about the dolphins? And he answered dolphins, uh, sorry, scientists. So how, because they care, how do they make a difference? Let's complete reading. In the past, tens of thousands of dolphins drowned each year in purse scenes. This needless loss of life caused a great outcry by the general public and scientists in the 1970s. The result was the formation of the United States Marine Mammal Protection Act which protects dolphins and other marine mammals in U.S. waters. Now, most marine mammals are also protected by international law. So here, there is a cause and there is an effect. What is the cause and what is the effect? You have three minutes to figure this out. And remember, what was their aim or their goal? There is a cause and there is an effect. Hamza, do you have an answer yet? No. You don't? No, I didn't. <laughs> um. Keep searching. Rakan? Yes. Do you have an answer yet? Maybe this if the dolphin with the, in the past of thousands, of dolphins don't each ear and use sinners. Very good. This, this is the cause or the effect? It's the effect. Huh? This is the what? The cause. The cause. Very good. This is what happened first. So this is the cause. Very good. What is the effect then? The needles lose of uh, light caused to create actually by the general public and scientists in the uh, 1970. As a result of the dolphin death, uh, what uh, happened? Uh, the rules were the formation of the United States Marine Mammal Product Act 
which protect dolphins and other marine mammals. Very good, very, very good. And what was and the USA, next step afterwards? Now most marine mammals are also protected by and marine law. By international law. Very, very good. Great, 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 Rakan. Very good. So we have a cause and we have an effect. The cause is that millions of or tens of thousands of dolphins died in the past. As a result, what happened? They formed a council to protect the what? The marine life. The marine life. As you can see here in the diagram, it shows the total number of dolphins. As you can see here, that it dramatically dropped between 1961 and 1962, or 1962 and 1963. It dramatically dropped. Okay, just a minute, let me just, yep, here. It dramatically dropped here. And then it had a sudden rise, a sudden rise, um, around 1968, but then it dropped again in 1973. Sorry, here's 68, here's 72. And here we have another dramatic drop, another dramatic drop between uh, 66 and 67. So it's fluctuating. Fluctuating means going up and going down, going up and going down. The numbers of the dolphins are going up and going down until 1995, when it became stable. But did it became stable in a good way or in a bad way? Hmm. What do you think? It became yes very good it became stable in a bad way because it is slowly dropping can you see the line it's not straight it's slowly dropping see it's slowly dropping slowly dropping slowly dropping so let's go on to the next page here Currently, okay, so let's read. I'll tell you the question first, then you will have three minutes to find out the answer because the answer is in paragraph nine, okay? Underline details that help you understand the goals of these ocean scientists. So we need the goals of the scientists or the aim of the scientists or why did these scientists go into the ocean and make this exciting trip okay so we need to know why did they go into the ocean okay let's read hamza you nailed it very good <laughs> currently scientists closely monitor the tuna fishery now most tuna fishermen allow the dolphins to escape before they drown. Sometimes with a swimmer in the net to help the dolphins escape. But dolphin populations are not recovering as quickly as predicted. And scientists don't know why. Thus capture causes stress that lowers the survival. Or perhaps Overfishing and pollution combined with shifts in climate may be affecting the balance of the ocean ecosystem. With long-term monitoring combined with ecosystem studies, we hope to understand why these populations aren't recovering at a faster rate. So, here, we need to know why did these scientists go out to the sea? What is their goal? 
What is their aim? Okay, you have three minutes to do it in paragraph nine. Okay, it's in paragraph nine. You have three minutes. It's 47. At 50, I will get back to you. The question is that we need to know the details. Why did the scientists go out into the sea? Why did they go out into the sea? Okay. You have 50 seconds left. Okay, Abdulaziz. Hello, mister. Hello. Can you please tell me uh, actually, the answer? Yeah. Actually, this is, I see we hope to understand why these populations are in recovery at the fa faster rate. Very good. Very, very good. So they went to the sea because they want to understand why these populations are recovering in a faster at a faster rate very good very very good yeah. you guys who said it on the chat you're amazing i saw it but because no most of you uh replied i couldn't answer you all you guys are amazing your answers were all great okay uh, but you can see here in the text feature the dolphins are escaping but the tuna is caught at the end of the net. Can you see it? Dolphins are smarter than the tuna, I believe. Okay. Now, this is the last page of today's class. Let's read it. Then I'll ask you lots of questions. Finally, we are ready to leave San Diego. Before each long journey, there is always a sense of anticipation. What will we see this time? There is, however, a downside to every long trip. I know I will miss my home, family, and friends. Heading south. Over the next, oh, sorry, 15 degrees, 47 minutes north, 120 degrees, 52 minutes west. Over the next days, we move offshore and head south to warm tropical water. Our route takes us south of the Hawaiian Islands. In a few weeks, after a month at sea, we will turn and head north to Hawaii, 
to resupply and fuel the ship. The ocean color has changed since we left San Diego. It is a beautiful clear blue. I look down through the water and it seems as though I can see for miles. Here, the water can be much more than a mile deep. It looks nothing like the ocean near shore of California, which often has a murky green or brownish cast to it, caused by lots of plankton and algae. The tropical ocean is clear because it has much less of these. Now here guys, in the text feature, it shows us how do they collect samples, okay? This net, this net called a banjo. This net is called a banjo. And at the end of the banjo, as you can see, there is a sample jar, okay? So what happens? This banjo looks like a drum. It's used for catching small fish and plankton. Some creatures frequently caught in a banjo toe are pictured here, clockwise. A spotted larva squid. This is the spotted larva squid. A semi-clear larva octopus. This is a semi or semi clear larva octopus. And the krill, this is the krill. Krill are small relatives of shrimp and are an important food for whales and birds. So guys, I need you here in this text here to get me two things that can be caught in a banjo. Two things that can be caught in a banjo. Okay, one of them is mentioned here in the um, uh, uh, in this uh, passage. Okay, here in passage number eleven. In passage number eleven. Wait, what the? Yes, here it's mentioned in passage number eleven and also mentioned in the caption of the text feature. So here, search here. Hmm. Who can say it? Who can say it? Read this part and read this part. Search for things that can go into the what? The banjo. What can go into the banjo? Uh, I need a living thing, not a color. I need a living thing. Oh. Way to go. Yusuf, this is the banjo, Yusuf. This is the banjo. I'm, I've been sitting for the last three minutes. Omar, Ilyas, Adham, Muhammad. Very good, guys. Amazing. Who else? Ilyas, very good. Okay, Hamza, I need from the text here. Huh. From the text. Huh. It's in the text and it's in the caption. Hmm. What's in the text and at the same time in the caption. Very good, Muhammad Walid, very good.
Very good, Adham. Very good. Amr Atif. Hello, Mister. Hello, Amr. Now, what creature is repeated here in paragraph 11 and in this caption? Huh. Uh, paragraph 11 and, and the caption? Yes, there's one creature that is repeated. Hey. I don't see uh, 11. Here, I need this part of 11. Okay. Wait, uh, it's um, it's wait. Uh, hmm. some creatures firmly coat in a bone go to our picture shirt. Uh, here clock clock clockwise. Mm, we'll see, huh? Yeah, I man. Yes, Mister. Ah, what? Which creature is also caught in this banjo? Banjo, sorry. Again, Mister. Huh? Which creature here is in the banjo? Is caught in the banjo? Everyone can mute and say the answer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's plankton and algae. The plankton and algae, okay, because they are small organisms that can fit into the sample jar okay so thank you very much for this amazing class i really really enjoyed it so i will see you tomorrow inshallah and i hope you are safe and sound and i hope that you're great i hope you understood everything and I'll be sure, inshallah, to see you tomorrow. I love you guys. Bye.